Hello and welcome to another episode of Visiting Professionals. Today I'm in Detroit's Hart Plaza visiting with jib operator Dave McNutt. Hi, nice to be here. Hi, my name is Austin Slaybaugh. I'm a student at Open University. Most of my time is spent on campus in class. But when I'm not hitting the books, I'm visiting professionals. Today on Visiting Professionals, I'm in Hart Plaza in Detroit, Michigan, visiting with Jib owner and operator Dave McNutt. Dave's invited me downtown during the Red Bull Heartlines event to see what exactly his job entails. All right, so I'm here in Hart Plaza, Detroit with Dave McNutt. Dave, can you tell me exactly what it is we're doing here today? Uh, we're covering skateboarding, the Red Bull Heartlines event uh, at Hart Plaza. Uh, what exactly is your specific job that you're doing here? I'm the jib operator, owner operator, and uh, the jib allows the camera to move very quickly and up and down motion, and I'll follow the skaters as they pass by this position. Uh, Dave, what exactly is a jib? A jib is basically a stick or an arm. Uh, sailboats have jibs on them. Uh, construction cranes, or certain construction cranes are referred to as jibs. So it's an arm or a stick. Because the jib arm involves some mechanical and technical challenges throughout the day, Dave brings along a jib tech to help out for each and every production. All right, so I'm here with Mara, the jib tech operator at Detroit's Heart Plaza. Uh, can you tell me exactly what it is that you do? In so many words, I get to put together that big tinker toy back there. Lots of people don't know what a jib arm is. I say it's a 30-foot extension arm. It's a camera. It gets you those beautiful shots that everybody wants. So, Mara, why did you want to get involved with being a jib tech? Dave's been a great friend of mine for a long time, and I've always admired what he does. You know, at Facebook things, and so I'd be jealous, and I'd be like, just give me in, let me, let me see what you're doing. So finally, he decided that one day maybe uh, he needed somebody to help out. He's not getting any younger, you know. So he's bringing a couple of people aboard, which happens to be two females. And um, just following him, he's a great teacher and uh, hoping to be able to do what he does someday. Coming up after this short break, I sit down with jib owner and operator Dave McNutt and ask him some important questions about his career. When Visiting Professionals continues. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Visiting Professionals. We're in Detroit, Michigan, visiting with jib camera owner and operator Dave McKnight. Dave was kind enough to sit down and answer some questions about what it takes to be a jib operator. Uh, we're here with Jib owner and operator Dave McNutt. Dave, tell me a little bit about yourself. Are you from Michigan? I am from Michigan, uh, born and raised. Uh, lived in the Detroit suburb um, for 62 years and um, operating a Jib arm. Uh, how did you become interested in being a Jib operator? I had a friend, um, Vaughn Miette, who worked at Victor Duncan, which is a now defunct rental company uh, that was in Detroit. And he called me one day and asked me if I would like to come in and learn this gadget that they've got in inventory now. He said, if you come in and learn how to safely operate and set up this gadget, I will send you out uh, when it rents. And so I went in and started working on a jib arm, a Cammate brand jib arm. And to his word, when people rented this thing, nobody knew how to operate it or set it up, so he would send me out with it and I'd set it up and operate it 
and that's how I became a jib operator. Now, did any of your schooling or past experiences help you with learning how to use a jib arm? Um, the one thing that helped me, not specifically schooling, but it is an issue in today's environment is that my mechanical skills were developed as a young child because I would work on my dad's car, we would build uh, tree houses in the summer, we worked with our hands, and we worked with tools where today's youth they've grown up in front of a computer. And we have, we have people your age on sets right now that have never handled a screwdriver in their life. And we're having to teach these people basic life skills. So that's what helped me become a jib operator was my, my life skills prior to getting into the business. Okay. Now, what was your first paid project that you did using the jib arm? Uh, first paid project uh, was a Styx concert in Chicago, Illinois. Um, I had had my jib arm about a week. I got a call from a producer that was doing um, the Grand Illusion tour. What's the farthest that you've ever traveled with the jib arm? Uh, farthest would be probably the Bahamas. I was there two years ago for a track and field event, um, and I've gone out to Vegas uh, frequently with it. How did you end up getting a shot at filming something in the Bahamas? Um, I was actually working um, the India equivalent to the Oscars. Uh, India does their Oscars show in India every year, and then they do the show one other place around the world. And uh, in 2014, it happened to be Tampa, Florida. So the company that hired me to do the Oscar event in Tampa a week later took me to the Bahamas. So we just okay. left the jib arm in Tampa. Mm -hmm. It went on to a TV truck, which then went on to a cargo ship, and it all sailed to the Bahamas. So Dave, where's some of your work been featured or just anything that you're really proud of that stands out? Well, I'm always proud of the feature films I work on because that's kind of like the, you know, considered the highest form, art form one can um, achieve. So I've done a movie called Highland Park with Danny Glover. I did Dial a Prayer with William Macy. Um, I've shot a lot of uh, kid rock videos, um, which are always stellar. He is a true professional. Uh, a lot of people think he's this wild and crazy guy, but he's a stone cold professional. Now, I hear you're one of only three people in Michigan that owns their own jib arm, correct? I'm one of three people in Michigan that own a jib arm. Now, do you know them or do you stay I, I, totally no. apart? That's the competition. <laughs> There's well, the It's a little both. Actually, um, one of the gentlemen I'm good friends with. We have lunch from time to time. In fact, we've done some projects. We travel um, to Cleveland once and we told our stories and it was a very candid conversation and the stories were identical. Um, his, his skill levels and his path was almost identical to the path that um, I traveled as a jib own, uh, owner operator. How much does a jib cost anyways? Uh, I've got approximately $100,000 tied up into my present jib arm. Now is that just the jib arm or is that with all the extra no, equipment, everything? No, uh, it's all the extra stuff. The actual jib arm costs about $32,000. But I have uh, two custom carts that were $4,000 a piece. Wow. Uh, my jib is the probably the most unique jib in the United States in that most guys carry their jib arm in these cases called Pelican cases. Mm -hmm. They're like huge suitcases. And I used to carry mine in suitcases too. And now my jib arm rolls in, the entire jib arm rolls in on two carts where other guys are dragging case after case after case in. And then of course they've got to carry the weights in. And some of these guys will carry 400 pounds of weights mm -hmm. in individually. Well, my 500 pounds of weights are right on the carts. And we just push the cart in. Coming up, our visit continues with jib owner and operator Dave McKnight as he answers more interesting questions about his career. When visiting professionals continues. Ninety-four percent of people realize that littering is a major environmental problem. Yet the United States spends eleven and a half billion dollars each year on cleanup projects. Do your part. Reduce. Reuse. Recycle. Visit kab.org for more information.
Welcome back to Visiting Professionals. We're in Detroit, Michigan today visiting with jib camera owner and operator Dave McKnight. I had more technical questions about Dave's equipment and Dave was ready to answer. Now a jib's a pretty big machine. Do you know how much exactly all that weighs? Uh, actually it's not bad. Uh, the jib arm minus the counterbalance is only 200 pounds okay. and then depending on the length and the type of camera we can have as much as 500 pounds counterweight on the rear end and we basically use um, barbell weightlifting weights as counterbalance, nothing fancy. So with all that weight that's on the jib, do you have anybody that helps you? Um, I do have uh, a couple people that help me and it's not specifically because of the amount of weight on the jib but the nature of how the business operates now. Um, the, the nature of the business is very fast these days. The producers want to move, move, move and a jib arm is not easy to move and a jib arm is not a run and gun type tool. Um, it takes time to set up. It takes time to balance, uh, rehearse the move, and then do the move. And then right after that, they want to go. They want to move the jib down the street. So people come with me now. I have techs that help me build it and then move it. And they assist me in all manner. Uh, they hold things to block the sun from hitting my eyes. Uh, they help balance the jib out. The jib is a very precision instrument. And it has to be level to earth and it has to be balanced so that um, your center of gravity is zero. So that gravity is not affecting the movement of the jib. So Dave, how did you end up finding these techs that help you out with your production? About 10, 12 years ago, I saw the shift in the business and I saw that I'm going to need help. Um, and so I put an ad, um, I went to the Specs Howard School and they were partners in some collegiate website. I placed an ad and people started answering the ad. Uh, but they burn out very quickly because um, a lot of people think that this production business is glamorous. This production business is anything but glamorous. It's hard, dirty, nasty work at times. Um, we're expected to work outside when it's torrential rain. We're outside working in the blazing sun at 104 degrees. And the coldest I've ever worked in was 17 below zero. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. That's right. How did you get involved with your tech, Mara? Well, I have another tech named Kelly who's on maternity leave right now. Um, but before um, Kelly, um, got pregnant, she was assisting me and she had gotten to the point where she started uh, operating the jib on her own. So my plan was to bring another person in to assist Kelly when she's out on jobs and that was a girl named Mara. Mara had been a friend of mine for many, many years. She was fascinated by what I did for a living and so I approached her one day and said, You've always wanted to do this. Would you really like to do it? And so in her spare time, she came out. She learned how to assist in setting the jib up. She learned all the names and the procedures, how to safely do it. We're teaching her the pitfalls. There are very many dangerous pitfalls in production um, that a rookie will make um, because of lack of knowledge. So she's working with me now assisting. Dave, does she ever run the jib at all? She actually ran the jib by mistake at the Tigers opening day uh, game. Uh, she was standing behind the jib and they took the jib live to air while she was there. So yes, she has technically operated the jib <laughs> on live TV. Did she do a good job? She did. Okay, trial by fire. It is. Dave, in a predominantly male industry, how did you find two qualified women to be your tech assistants? It's an interesting story and um, I mentioned earlier that I had um, teamed up with Specs Howard. Um, we posted an ad on one of the collegiate sites and um, I got many responses. Uh, some were pitiful. Some people couldn't even spell basic words. Um, but I got a, a resume and cover letter from a girl named Kelly. And we talked on the phone. Um, I tried to convince her not to get into the production business to go to medical school or law school and she was dead set on working in the production business. So I took her out on a job and she watched and saw what we did. And I had a guy working with me who was my tech that day and he knew that Kelly was coming along. 
And uh, so after the job was done, Kelly and I spoke again on the phone and she decided she wanted to intern with me. And the deal is and was and still is with the people who come under my tutelage is when you work for me, you get paid, but you train on your own time. So, which is a little different from the old days because when I got into the business, I worked for free. There was no pay. If you want to get in this business, mm -hmm. then you have to sacrifice. So I'm a little lenient nowadays. I pay them when they work. So um, Kelly was stellar and she could lift things that men her own age can't lift. She can do mechanical things that men her own age can't do. And quite frankly, the men who have tried to help me in this business, they flush, they can't do the work. Um, and I don't know why, um, but Kelly has hung in there and she's gone from a know nothing 21 year old to a stellar operator at 24 years old now. And Mara was the same way. Mara can handle a hammer, a screwdriver, a wrench, and the guys, the equivalent age, can't. For some reason, the women have better mechanical skills at this age. Um, it's the woman's touch, Dave. Yeah, it's, it's the yeah. Touch. <laughs> Coming up after the break, our visit continues with jib owner and operator Dave McKnight as he shares more tantalizing tidbits about his career and the film business when Visiting Professionals continues. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Visiting Professionals. We're in Detroit, Michigan at the Red Bull Heartlines event today, visiting with jib camera owner and operator Dave McKnight. I had some tough questions for Dave about working in the industry, and Dave was eager to share his knowledge. Dave, what are some of the pitfalls that you have to deal with when working with a jib or in production in general? Okay, um, there's a lot of pitfalls. Some are major, some are funny and small. Some of the funny ones, what I tell the people who work with me is don't put parts and pieces in your pocket. There's a lot of knobs and there's a lot of screws involved with building the jib arm. So what these young people want to do is stick the part in their pocket. And we have this very special tool. It's basically a small little pipe, but it's a pretty pipe and we call it the tool. And it's essential for putting the jib arm together. It's natural to stick this little tool in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. And what happens at three o'clock in the morning after the assistant is home from doing a concert all day and night, they're undressing, emptying their pockets, and they find out they have jib parts in their pocket. Yeah. So that's a pitfall now, because if I have a job the following day, mm -hmm. they have to get those parts back to me. So that's one of the little pitfalls. Um, other things are you're dealing with um, a metal object that goes in the air and can touch electric lines. And of course, metal and electricity does not go hand in hand. So we have to teach um, about knowing your surroundings, what's above you, what's below you. Uh, you have a s object that's moving. You've got a 50 pound camera at the end and if somebody walks into your path, you're gonna hit them. Have you yourself ever made a mistake when you were filming with the job? I make a mistake, at least one mistake on every job I do. Um, some days you can walk on water and other days they just soon shoot you. Um, so it's, it's, it ebb and flows. It's, it's a very hard job. That's why there's only three in Michigan that do it. Now, has anyone ever been harmed while you were using a jib? Yes, yes, oh, yes. yes. Um, actually, I was harmed. Oh. I was on a job. Um, it was a very hot, 
humid day, mm -hmm. probably 90 degrees with 100% humidity, and I crossed under my jib and I hit the top of my head. I banged Ooh. it on the jib. And it hurt, but I didn't think anything more of it until a production assistant came by and said, David, you're bleeding very bad. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the blood I felt running down my face, uh -huh. I thought was sweat. Oh, because it was so hot out. And it's because it was so hot out. So with the new technology that's being developed and the use of drones and footage, how has that affected your job? It's actually helped me. Well, as it turns out, the drones are causing lots of problems. The government steps in, local authorities have stepped in, and I'll give you an example of how it has helped me, is a lot of car commercials are shot in the uh, Metro Park Six system in Wayne County. Well, Wayne County Metro Park System will not allow drones to be used in the parks now. So the producers still need to get a camera high, so they can't bring the drone in, so they dr bring the jib in. Now, you said you were one of only 30 or 40 people in the United States that has an, their own jib. Well, there's probably more. There are probably right. hundreds of jibs, but I would say the A-listers are 30 to 50 guys in the United States. Okay. So that gives you a lot more job security in this industry, something that not too many people get when doing this. It does. And one of the things I learned, um, I knew early in my career that um, if I wanted to make more money, I would have to own gear. Guys who own gear not only get their labor rate for the day, but we get the gear rental too. So Dave, is there any drawbacks to owning your own jib at all? Well, there's maintenance, there's upkeep, um, keeping up with technology. I'll give you an example. Um, about so five, six years ago, we had the influx of the uh, DSLR cameras. Uh, my jib arm was not designed to hold such a small camera. And the problem was is that on the robotic head, we have a plate that's about um, oh, six inches wide, and it's got six inches of travel for a camera to balance. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things we achieve in jib arm operation is achieving zero center of gravity. So we have got to adjust the camera so that no matter where we put it before the gears are engaged, the camera will stay at the angle we put it. Gravity has no effect on it. Well, these cameras were too small, so I had to design and build a what we call a sled that cost $500 and just to deal with the DSLRs. Um, now the DSLR craze is kind of fading away. Mm -hmm. Now I have this $500 ga dollar gadget that I seldom use, uh, but it's the nature of the beast. Um, we have to keep up on the monitor technology. When I first got a jib, we were in um, standard analog definition, and then HD came along. So then we had to upgrade to HD monitors. Um, we have normal wear and tear, things come loose. Um, so I'm always tweaking this, always making the system better. Dave, what's the first thing that you do when you get to a production? What's the last thing that you do before you leave? Okay. Well, usually the first thing we do is check out where the coffee is. Um, <laughs> uh, crew calls are very early. Um, I do a job every year where we have to be on site at 4 a.m., which means a 2 a.m. wake up. Uh, so those are brutal days. Mm -hmm. um, but the first thing I'll do is check with the production coordinator or producer or director, someone higher up the food chain than myself and look and check out where the jib has to go. Um, and we'll inspect the area, mm -hmm. see if there's any problems with the jib being there. Um, and if there are no problems, then we go back to the trailer, we unload the trailer and we bring the jib arm in and we start building. Dave, what would you say has been the highlight of your career so far? The highlight of my career has nothing to do with jib work. Um, the highlight of my career, one of the things I'm proudest of is um, I used to teach at Spex Howard. Um, and I was sitting in my office one day and this new kid had came in and asked if he could talk to me for a minute. And I said, sure. And he introduced himself and he said, I want to make movies. That's my dream. And he was only in his fourth or fifth day of school. So I told the young man to go to the front desk and see if he could get his money back. 
and to take that money and buy a ticket to Los Angeles because if you want to work in the movie business, you have to go to L.A. Just like if you want to work in the car business, you have to come to Detroit. So he didn't. He, can, he stayed in school and he finished Spex Howard and he got a job at a local video production company, but in the back of his mind, he wanted to work in film. So there's a guy named uh, Lon Stratton in Detroit who owns Stratton Camera, and the gentleman's name, the student, is Bud Kremp. So Buddy went to Lon one day, knocked on the door, and said, listen, I'll clean your bathrooms and take out the trash if you just let me watch what you do here. And as a businessman, Lon Stratton goes, oh, free bathroom cleaning and trash removal? You're on. So Buddy started doing that. Well, as any story goes, one day Lon goes, Buddy, get me that cable over there. And then sooner or later, Buddy's now loading film magazines. Now Buddy is assisting Lon on camera rentals and production. So in the meantime, Bud gets married to his um, college sweetheart and he's still not in Hollywood. So he finds an ad in a trade magazine that Claremont Camera in Hollywood is looking for a rental manager. So Buddy takes the red eye out to LA, arrives in the morning, goes into the airport bathroom and does a stand-up shower, brushes his teeth, and goes to the interview where he convinces the man at Claremont to hire him and Claremont Camera gave him 30 days to get to LA to start the job. So Buddy comes back all excited, announces to his wife that they're moving to California. He's finally got a little crack in the door and his wife says, I can't go. So Buddy divorces her for his dream and he moves to LA and he's a camera rental operator for a few years. He's meeting all the guys who come in to prep packages. And one thing leads to another, and he is now an agent represented camera operator and who spent five years shooting the uh, ABC show Lost, and now he's presently working on the TNT show The Last Ship. And he got his dream. Wow. And then I guess, um, the other thing I'm proudest of is that I've developed a career on my own. I, I report to myself. I go out, I hunt, and I get the food and I bring it home. I don't depend on anybody else for a paycheck. Dave, what advice would you give to a student or just somebody in general that's looking to get a job in your field? That's a loaded question. Um, the advice I would give to someone still a student wanting to get into my business is learn everything you can. The school is only going to teach you about 40 percent of what you need to know. Um, you're going to need a strong work ethic. Um, like I've mentioned a couple of times, um, the young kids coming up through the ranks because they're a digital person, they don't have the mechanical skills, and production is all mechanical. You're working with tools, you're working uh, with geometry. Um, geometry is huge um, in our business because we're dealing with angles and weights and measures. The other advice I would give them is not to chase the dollar. Chase the skill. The money will come. Learn the etiquette of production and learn the life skills. So Dave, I have one last question for you. I ask everybody and you will be no different. Is this the best job in the world? It is. There is no place one can make six figures a year working two to three days a week. Now I don't have paid vacations. I pay my own health care. Uh, I pay my own insurances, but it is the best job in the world. Well, Dave, Thank you for your time today and coming in. I really do appreciate you being Thank you, here. It's been great seeing what you do. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Visiting Professionals. I'd like to give a special thanks to Dave McKnight and Red Bull Heartlines. Once again, I'm Austin Slaboff, signing off.